So let's talk a little bit about collateral then. So usually, you know, again, in my experience, anytime you have a fronting carrier and you've got reinsurers, you know, typically, you know, there's premiums that go into the captive that cover, you know, a certain amount of the risk, but there's usually a gap there. Um, and that usually requires the client to post some collateral. Um, is that present in this program? And what does that look like? Yeah, in most cases, um, the ones we've written, they've required uh, some sort of collateral. And you look at what are the limits. So let's say you have the captive is that sell captive is on the hook out of a $5 million policy. They're on the hook for a million dollars. And after reinsurance costs, the cost to set it up, um, run it, let's say that there's $800,000 left there, then the client will have to post $200,000 in collateral. That could be cash. That could be funds kept with the uh, carrier. Could be letters of credit, direct pay letters of credit. It's really up to the client and their banking relationships, but they want them, the the insurance company wants to make sure that they're covered in the event that they have a claim. Got it. So whatever the max amount uh, of exposure is for that particular cell, you know, it's going to be need to be topped up to make sure the the fronting carrier is is not exposed. Correct. Yep. Exactly. Because at the end of the day, all the fronting carrier is doing is issuing it, issuing the policy, and reinsuring that to um, the specialty cell. But they, again, they don't want the risk. And if they don't want the, re- the insurance risk because it's transferred out, but most importantly, they don't want the credit risk that comes along with it. 